Hello and welcome. My name is Charles Johnson, lead trainer and technical engineer at LinkSpring. And today we're going to be talking about BQL in Niagara 4. And how the heck do we do it? Well, BQL is an incredibly useful language that can be used in all versions of Niagara. BQL stands for Baja Query Language. It's made for uh, it's made to search for specific data within your station and then return groups of whatever objects you need. A working knowledge of BQL is very helpful for working with many more advanced techniques and modules from the many Vicon Pro modules that actually depend upon those BQL queries uh, to quickly grabbing device summaries and basic data tables during commissioning. At any point in time in Niagara, uh, within the station, you can use Control L to pull up a text field that allows you to navigate to, uh, to any manually input ORDs, uh, which stands for Object Resolution Descriptor, uh, which is some sort of uh, internal Niagara URL. And these ORDs are what you get when you copy an individual component inside of a station. And here we can see uh, you know, we can see that uh, I have a, a, a floor that uh, I have VAVs under, and I've hit control and it brings me up to this particular ORD. And again, ORD stands for Object Resolution Descriptor, and it's uh, an internal Niagara URL. So uh, after I put in uh, a specific statement, let's look at a breakdown. So with this BQL query, uh, I wanted to look for uh, my VAVs uh, and actually put the space temp next to them in a grid. So I typed in station colon slot uh, for the first floor. So I actually went to hit control L and then I created a BQL uh, select to show the VAVs, uh, the space temp, uh, space temp value. Uh, and I wanted to search from only uh, folders instead of like control points where the name was like VAV. So let's look at uh, how this statement is actually broken down. So the first part, station colon slot first floor, this is the base ORD being applied. The query is not going to return any of the components that are not children of the base ORD. Next, let's talk about uh, the select statement, as well as our, uh, I like to call it a projection. So every BQL query is going to start with a base ORD, followed by the BQL select. The following text defines what data we want to receive. In our case, we used name and space temp dot out dot value. These are used uh, in our column and are resolved and populated by each results info for when we run our query. This is basically B format, uh, like what's used in TX text animations. Uh, if we are trying to find what parent we need to use, like uh, parent.proxyext.device.name, like in a history, or alarm. Dot, uh, you know, uh, dot high value, or alarm data. Dot high value, or alarm data. Dot source name. Those are B format, which stands for Baja format. And we can use that to quickly access nearly any information this way uh, by using the names of slots that are under the target. You can even run some specific uh, BQL scalar functions, such as sum out dot value, which combines multiple results or multiple separate data types. Then we have what we call the predicate, and this is really the first half of our predicate. This is where we're going to start to filter down uh, to the results that we want. In this case, I'm using uh, from Baja folder, which tells me to ignore all components that aren't the type Baja folder. And the same can be done for nearly other types, such as Niagara driver dot Niagara state or colon Niagara station, uh, control uh, colon numeric point, and backnet colon backnet device. The second half of our predicate, this is where we get far more specific with our filtering. Here we used where name like VAV asterisk, <laughs> and this is gonna remove any results that don't match the statement. In this case, we're looking for a folder whose name is like VAV. And we added a wildcard function to make sure that we can find them all. 
This section will ultimately, uh, or actually I'll say most commonly require the most thought put into it and has the most varied functionality. But ultimately just remember that this is just a statement that ends up as a true or false to filter out the results and it becomes a more simpler to figure out. The specific syntax here is well documented within Niagara and can be accessed by using control L and entering module colon forward slash forward slash doc developer forward slash doc forward slash BQL expressions dot HTML. Our final section uh, is that we can actually reorder our results if we want to. Now, I didn't have this in my previous one, but I felt it was really uh, important to put it in here, so I just added this afterwards. Um, but our final section is where we can order our results, uh, which can be very helpful in certain use cases. Uh, for example, we wanted to uh, sort our rows by zone temp from highest to lowest using order by space temp dot value DESC. Um, and much like in our uh, projection and predicate, we can be specific, uh, we can use any specific property in mostly the same way as B format, uh, you know, like in the text animation. And we can go from lowest to highest uh, within order uh, dot space temp dot value uh, uh, ASC. And we could even alphabetize uh, with order by name DESC or ASC. Uh, or even uh, an ORD location, you know, within um, ORD by like slot path DSC. We also can use the having clause of BQL to show any result having the space temp dot value properties that are greater than 70 degrees. And as we've seen, uh, we can use BQL for some fast, easy data summaries and reports. And this is very useful for everything from quickly accessing the station uh, that you've never seen to checking many values during commissioning. However, within a station, BQL can be used for many powerful features. Uh, the first one that we're going to talk about, and most people know about this, uh, are the Vicom Pro modules. Um, they're often underappreciated modules from Tritium, but they have very many useful components. One uh, component in particular is the min-max average BQL component. And as the name implies, uh, this BQL uh, uses, or I'm sorry, this uses BQL to find the min-max average values of matching components, and then it continuously updates with those values. Uh, the point query in the slot uh, is where our BQL knowledge will hopefully come in hand. However, this is way easier to edit, uh, uh, way easier to edit the uh, BQL, although it's limited. So this is actually what the block looks like. And then we see uh, that we have uh, the BQL. And if we were to click uh, on the uh, folder right next to uh, this point query and go to BQL query, we will actually bring up the BQL query builder. This is where you choose where to define the base ORD with the find. And the of type is where you specify your type in, uh, in for your from statement. And the match box is actually where you define your predicate. These are also seen in batch editor too, which I'm actually gonna be using. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a video on batch editing as well. And another powerful use of BQL actually involves another simple ORD scheme called the cell schema. So this allows you to grab a single value from a resulting table. It's pretty simple, but it's deceptively powerful. For example, if you have a PX graphic with an overview of a group of VABs. You can grab the highest zone temperature and dynamically um, grab it uh, with, a, with a properly formatted BQL query uh, and this ORD cell schema. So for example, if I were to take this first floor and select out dot value from a numeric point where, it, where the name equals space temp and order it by the out dot value in a descending cell from one to zero, this just says to discard the rest of the results and return the value at column one, row zero. So as you can see, uh, this will bind the label to a value of 79.2. Um, this is actually going to, uh, and it's going to reevaluate each time the page is loaded. Uh, and, uh, and since we're sorting our results of high to low, it's always going to give us the highest value. 
So this actually right here, as you can see, uh, if this were a true component grid, this is, um, you know, this is uh, column one, row zero. So that uh, it will always return it in a bound label itself. So let's talk about things to remember. One, using control L shows, up, shows the current ORD in the area of the station that you're in. Remember, ORD stands for Object Resolution Descriptor, and it is the URL in Niagara. And from there, that's where you can adjust the BQL or the Baja Query language. Understanding B format uh, takes some time to get to know it. Understanding B formatting like parent.name, uh, out.value, um, uh, alarm.status, or overridden dot, or status.overridden, um, you know, that goes a long way when doing these queries. And if a, uh, make sure that you practice, 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 practice. The thing is that play with BQLs until you're comfortable. You can't break the system with them if you're just querying, it doesn't really matter. The more that you use it, the more that you're going to understand. And the last thing is, if a component doesn't have a way to, describe, uh, to subscribe to your data like a history extension, sometimes the data in the BQL is only gonna update um, when you uh, are looking for specific things such as a component uh, directly rather than a folder. So in my, uh, in my query that I showed you that showed the folder, it's only gonna give me the value at the time in which I subscribe to it. Uh, if I had other trends in there, it would subscribe to it constantly. But if I actually changed it to a component, it would actually constantly update. So be careful about how you're going to uh, format your queries. Well, that's all I have for you today about Baja Query Language. Please watch out for a video uh, showing, uh, outlining some other uh, types of queries. Uh, and if you uh, always uh, contact me with any questions at charles.johnson at linkspring.com. Thank you very much. Have a good day.